Hello and welcome back to my Women's History Month series. Yes, I know that Women's History Month ended about a week ago, but life got in the way and I wasn't able to put these videos out as early as I wanted to. Regardless, women are awesome and deserve to be celebrated every month, so in the grand scheme of things, I'm right on time. If you're new here, this is part two of a three-part series. I'll link part one in the cards and I'm taking this time to sketch and highlight some incredible black female authors you might not have heard of but whose work you'll love reading. This highly esteemed auntie you see me drawing here is Mama Miriam Tlali. I'm giving her an honorific because she's too old and too important for me not to. She was a novelist and short story writer from South Africa and the first female black writer in South Africa to have a novel published in English, which is wild when you discover that novel was published in 1975. Her debut was initially titled Miriam at Metropolitan, but has since been republished under her preferred title Between Two Worlds. It's set in Soweto and paints a portrait of South Africa under its apartheid regime. Everything she wrote was banned from the apartheid government at one point, so you know she was writing good stuff. But in 1995, she was awarded with the Literary Lifetime Achievement Award, and in 2008, she received the Ikemanga Silver Presidential Award from the South African government. Next, we have Yagi Yazi. Giyazi was born in Mampong, Ghana and moved to the US age 10. She was inspired to pursue a career in writing after reading Toni Morrison's Song of Solomon, one of my personal favourites, and published her first novel, Homegoing, in 2016. Homegoing follows the descendants of an Asante woman named Mame, from her daughter's enslavement in Ghana to the modern day. Giyazi follows this with her sophomore novel, Transcendent Kingdom, which I found to be a quieter but equally powerful novel. Transcendent Kingdom follows Gifty, our Ghanaian-American protagonist, as she juggles her PhD research in neuroscience and caring for her clinically depressed mother while battling ghosts of the past. To me, this novel cements Giyazi as one of the great writers of our time. Obviously there's a sketch down there that we are just going to brush over. It was Edwidge Dandicat, whose work you should definitely read, but her sketch just kept going from bad to worse, so we're going to pretend that doesn't exist. Moving swiftly on, we have Angie Thomas, whose book The Hate You Give blew up in 2017. The Hate You Give follows Star Carter and her community in the aftermath of the killing of her unarmed friend Khalil by a white police officer. As you can imagine, this book has seen its fair share of banned book lists, but it's a powerful and gripping portrayal of the people and communities impacted by police brutality. What's even more powerful is that Angie Thomas writes from personal experience. She experienced multiple instances of gun violence at a young age, and her mother heard the gunshot that killed civil rights legend Medgar Evans. Even though The Hate You Give is a young adult novel, it's a powerful read for adults too. We're going to close things out with multiple award-winning novelist and children's book writer, the inimitable Jacqueline Woodson. Woodson's bibliography is vast, but she's best known for her new Brianna winning titles, Brown Girl Dreaming, After Tupac and Dee Foster, Feathers and Showway. Her books explore the themes that make for fun times at family gatherings, gender, class and race. But the beauty of her work 
is that the character's search is for self rather than for acceptance within society. Regardless of the gender, class or race of the protagonists, Woodson's work is universal. And that ends my Women's History Month Part 2, which I should probably just rename, but we're too deep into it now. Look out for Women's History Month Part 3, the final instalment. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you read or have read any of the authors featured. Have a good day, good evening, or good night. Goodbye!